Michaela Garrett was only nine years old when she woke up at 5 a.m., unusually early for her, in order to write a poem. The people knock on doors of steel, the people knock, the people kneel. They think of things that aren't real outside those doors of steel. The people walk, the people know that outside those doors, the people know. The people think that you may say, the people think that they too may. They lack the confidence you have, they think it's real. The dreams you have, the dreams they feel. Michaela's mother, Sharon Murch, was disconcerted as this seemed a rather ominous and dark poem for a cheerful nine-year-old to be writing. Michaela said that she had awoken after hearing noises in her attic and that she had written the poem about people who were kidnapped and were trapped in her attic. Her mother pressed her on who these people, quote, outside steel doors were, presumably referring to the kidnappers in her poem as they would have stood outside the doors as opposed to inside, but Michaela was vague and provided no more details to her bewildered mother. Later that week, on November 19, 1988, Michaela and her friend Katrina Rodriguez rode their scooters 10 a.m. to go to Rainbow Market, a local convenience store they often frequented together on Mission Boulevard near Lafayette Avenue in Hayward. After picking up some snacks, they exited the store and, forgetting that they had ridden their scooters, began to walk home on foot. Upon realizing their mistake, they turned around to grab their scooters at around 10.15 a.m., but mysteriously, Michaela's scooter had been moved. It was now leaning against a light-colored car. As Michaela bent over to grab the scooter by the handlebars, a blonde man with pockmarks or other facial scarring grabbed Michaela by the waist and forced her into his vehicle. Michaela's friend ran back into the convenience store and alerted the clerk who quickly came to help, but it was too late. In the chaos of the aftermath of the abduction, a mistakenly false description was given by the shop owner to police. And therefore, for two days, the public and police looked for a burgundy car driven by a mustached, brown-haired man as opposed to a tan or light-colored car driven by a blonde, clean-shaven man with long, scraggly blonde hair. It wasn't until Michaela's friend was formally sat down and interviewed by police that the correct description was given out. But by that time, almost 48 hours, the most crucial part of an investigation, had passed. Over 15,000 tips came into police and the FBI's offices, with the most egregious false claim coming from inmate Roger Haggard, who claimed to have buried her body in the Hunter's Point neighborhood of San Francisco. When investigators flew him out to show them the location of the body, he made them dig aimlessly around for eight hours before admitting he had made it up to give the family, quote, peace of mind. Six and a half years was added to his sentence for making false statements and causing Michaela's family undue harm. Due to the Bay Area's density, there is a plethora of sex offenders and high-profile murder cases. The FBI combed through past offenders, specifically looking at the Speed Freak killers and the kidnappers of J.C. Lee Dugard, but no evidence linked either set of suspects. It was thought that a bone fragment found at the burial site of the Speed Freak killers may have belonged to Michaela, but DNA analysis in 2012 determined that they were not related. Long after Michaela's kidnapping stopped being headline news, Michaela's mother kept at it, ceaselessly and tirelessly passing out informational papers and yellow ribbons in the Hayward neighborhood where her daughter went missing. Her mother Sharon never stopped working and searching. She copied her daughter's missing child flyers thousands of times with the hopes that someone knew something and would come forward. Michaela's mother keeps a blog called Dear Michaela, where she posts updates on her life and on the case in the form of letters to her missing daughter. Her heartbreak and frustration at the lack of progress in the case is palpable, and she ends one of her more recent blog posts before she received any updates in the case with these heartbreaking words. Quote, I love you, baby girl, forever and ever. Remember, I am always in your heart. When you walk into a dark room, if you reach out your hand, I will always be there to hold it. Now, authorities in Alameda County have finally found their suspect. 
David Emery Mesh appeared in Superior Court of California on Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020, to face charges of murder during a kidnapping with special circumstances. After re-examining evidence from the case, which was over three decades old now, detectives gave a fingerprint examiner a series of names of people of interest. On that list was David Mesh. Although they did not disclose why he was a person of interest specifically, looking at the track record of his previous convictions for the 1989 murder of a Hayward woman, combined with the fact that he has been recently charged with two counts of murder in the brutal killing of two Fremont women in 1986, he would be a prime suspect as the timing and target females matched up. Diligent police work and investigation led to the realization that the palm prints on the handlebars and the fork of Michaela's scooter, the very scooter she had returned to retrieve when she was violently grabbed by the waist and pulled into a car, matched those of David Emery Mish. Mish has been incarcerated since 1990. He was previously convicted for the 1989 murder of a woman, also from Hayward, and because of his history of violence and the circumstances surrounding this case, he is eligible for the death penalty. He is being held in Santa Rita Jail in Alameda County. In reviewing the description of the suspect given by eyewitnesses more than 30 years ago, and in looking at his most recently published picture, the long, scraggly, and unkempt blonde hair stands out as an immediate and unique identifier. Police disclosed that two eyewitnesses to the people present in the parking lot minutes prior to Michaela's abduction picked the beleaguered and aged 59-year-old David Minch out of a photo lineup. Robert Purnell, one of the lead detectives on the case and the reporting officer on the arrest records, said that the suspect had, quote, a number of connections to the Hayward area. He was transient at times, bouncing in and out of Hayward hotels. Upon hearing the news of this major turn in the investigation, told to her via Zoom with detectives holding up a high quality color photograph of a man that she had never seen and did not recognize, Michaela's mother updated the public through her beautifully written and extensive blog and reacted poignantly to this news with words that are both heartbreaking and poetic. She writes, quote, While I have envisioned Michaela as not living in this world, she was always in a good place. I have seen her floating on clouds, running in grass meadows. I have literally envisioned the two of us sitting on stars in eternity, drinking tea and chatting, in a place where all the horrors of this life faded into insignificance in the greater whole. Now, for some reason, I can no longer see those places. I can only see my child, cold and alone. I feel like I abandoned her to pursue a rabbit trail when all this time I should have been lying with her. The suspect selfishly refused to speak with detectives or to give a swab of his DNA during his interaction with investigators on December 2nd, 2020. And while no further details are given, it is assumed that the court ordered subpoena and further tests are pending. Unfortunately, the suspect has not revealed where Michaela's body is located, but further interviews with the suspect are planned, and detectives are determined to provide closure for the family through the recovery of this innocent child's remains. Until then, a grieving mother who dreams of a happier life, sipping tea and simply talking to her daughter again, will continue to search for answers and pray that there is some higher force that reunites her and her daughter in the future. If you have any tips on this ongoing murder investigation or think you might recognize this man as being in the area around the time of Michaela's disappearance, please contact the Hayward Police Department at 510-293-7272. That's 510-293-7272.